Where am I? This is the National Quartet Convention. I'm here with the Merry Widows, yeah. my friends Nora and Marty. We are for sure we there. We named ourselves this week. This is Thursday night. Everybody's getting tired. A lot of people close up shop early, but we came in here just to do an intro because I have a special guest this week, and his name is Ronnie Henson. Everybody knows the song, The Lighthouse. So uh, he's going to do the show, and he's an amazing man of God. You will love his story. But I want to thank you for tuning in, and I want to thank my sponsor, Old Hilliard Plumbing at Hilliard, Ohio. And that number is 614-777-5320. Call and tell them that you heard it right here on Come Share the Joy. So I thank you for tuning in. We love you guys. Enjoy. And QC, by the way, National Quartet Convention. I went by and I spoke to him and I said, Sir, I would love to have you, I guess, on Come Share the Joy. And he said, Okay, what time? And I'm like, Oh my gosh, you're really going to do this? I am so honored to have you sitting in a chair beside of me. Anytime I can tell the good news and tell about Jesus and, and share that with, with friends, and I, uh, I say friends because some of the people that that are watching and listening uh, have never met me and I've never met them, but I'm like Jesus, I, in this respect anyway, I call those things that are not as though they already were. And so I anticipate uh, getting to know them. And uh, sometime down the road, we're still out traveling and going and singing and all my family, my brothers are in heaven and uh, my sister Yvonne and I are the only ones mm. only ones left here with an older sister that, take, that she takes care of. But yeah. uh, we're still out singing, my wife and I, and uh, and so who knows? We may be headed their way. So I want to tell them I love them. And, That's right. And and that God can do anything uh, for them. And it's uh, all about Jesus. It's all now we about, were going to talk about way back. Let's talk about way back. You're a solo right now. I'm a solo. Awesome. Awesome. And the first thing she talks about is way back. You go say ahead. let's go way back. No, go I said let's go. Oh, we're not going to go. <laughs> Well, let's go way back to the lighthouse. Okay, okay. My word, what a song. And I have him sitting right here in the chair. I am so excited. This is Come Share the Joy, and my joy is just overflowed to have you right here. Well, it's my pleasure. It's my pleasure to talk about uh, the lighthouse because I know what the lighthouse was to me. Yes, Lord. And uh, I was like a ship going down, no hope. Mm -hmm. And the devil was laughing at me, saying, I got you right where I want you. Yes. And your journey's over. And uh, before I crashed against the rocks of sin, like many of the people that I'm talking to know what I'm talking about, they either have and God rescued them, and uh, or they're about to crash against the rocks of sin. And, and uh, we don't have to go that way. No, sir. That old lighthouse is still standing, still shining. Still shining. And I remember when I when I wrote the lighthouse. The lighthouse was uh, the third song I ever wrote. You don't want to hear the first two, but. Uh, <laughs> The uh, the third song I ever wrote, and uh, all the, we lived out on the West Coast in California, right, literally on the West Coast. But I uh, I didn't like the ocean. They had that marine layer would come in, and you could be fifteen. Uh, your camera lady's already yawning, going to sleep. Is on she me. yawning? Yeah. She what out? can we do? She'll come. Say something. Shout coffee. out. She'll be shouting behind the camera. So we. So I remember um, that that marine layer fog would come in uh -huh. and uh, you could be 15 minutes uh, inland and it was beautiful sunshine, gorgeous day and you could uh, go out to the beach and that marine layer of fog would come in and you'd be just soaking wet and all. Uh -huh. So I didn't like the ocean no. and uh, had other reasons why I didn't like it uh, that would be long and, and detailed but mm. but uh, I remember uh, my dad as a pastor would have different church functions out on the beach and and he'd force us kids to have to go out there with them because they, they wouldn't leave us, leave us at so, home right? to tear up the house. <laughs> and so so we'd go out and I didn't want to be there and he didn't believe in the mixed bathing. So, so the women would swim uh -huh. way down here and the men just almost out of sight. You could just see dots, you know. and uh, I, I didn't want to be in that scene at all. They'd cook out, do hot dogs and all that. <clears throat> and I just want to go home. And I'd just walk out in the middle and look one way and then look the other way and holler, shark. <laughs> and everybody'd get out of the water. <laughs> oh my God. 
and I, you know, I'd ruin the party. Oh and uh, so I, and long story short, never liked the light uh, or the, the ocean. So I never laid eyes on the light. Uh -huh. Even though there was one not far from us, uh -huh. I didn't know that was, that was happening. And, and so I, uh, I remember uh, the, the big name groups that lived back east. Uh, and that's where my mom and dad were from, was, was uh, Arkansas and Tennessee. And we had relatives still living back east. And uh, we lived out there in California. And I remember uh, when we, were, we had first started singing, we instantly captured a big following of people out there on the coast. And so those big concerts that they would have where those big groups would come, to sing, they'd load their buses with their new estate track tapes, mm -hmm. and they'd come out to sing Oak Ridge Boys, the Rambos, the Goodmans, and different people like that. And we were that group that sung just before they would sing, and we'd sing all their new songs. <laughs> <laughs> and so we were either ignorant or, or innocent, but uh, but I think it was the early one. <laughs> but. Uh, so the people would come out and they'd say, the nerve of those professional groups singing you guys' songs. And we'd say, that's the way those professional groups are. They'll just <laughs> butt right in, you know. And uh, so they asked us, to, the promoters asked us, would we sing something of our own? Because mm -hmm. they wanted to keep us on, on the program because they drew a crowd with us. And so, uh, so we told them we'd try to do that. So one night, two weeks before a big concert, we're uh, working on songs out of the songbook, trying to translate them into something we could sing our style, and it wasn't working. And all my siblings were younger than me, and and uh, so they uh, they were about to go to sleep on me. And I just laughed and I said, "I'm going to go down to the basement uh, to the bathroom and uh, and write us a hit song." And they laughed and I laughed, and Aww. so I went down into the uh, basement of the church, big church, and uh, and in seven minutes on a piece of toilet paper I wrote The Lighthouse, and uh, I the, instantly when I was writing it, um, I knew it wasn't going to come around again, but I was watching the ink fade into the toilet paper, and I was thinking I had never be able to understand what I said, but it was like the Lord leaned over in the most unopportune place and time, which, you know, he did come in a, in a manger, yes, he Jesus did, did and uh, in a lowly cattle stable. And uh, so he shows up in those places that you wouldn't imagine yes. he would come, but like he, will, he will find a nobody in the gutter and uh, in the slums of humanity. And, and as Kenny put it in the song, the scrap heap of life. And that's where he'll show up. Glory to God. And he found me in, in that bathroom stall and wanted to speak to me. And it was like he sung it to me uh -huh. in my ear. And uh, so I wrote it down as fast as it come to me and uh, took it back up. And by that time, the ink had faded to where I was going to try to sing it to everybody. Uh -huh. And I couldn't understand what I'd written. And there. so I beat around the bush with it and couldn't couldn't clearly understand my own writing and and I finally wadded it up and I threw it in the toilet uh, the stories that say somebody else did but I threw it in the trash I mean and uh, and so after a while I I was while I was singing while we were singing trying to practice I kept on trying to cipher and say Lord bring this back to my memory what what I've written and it wasn't long until I said I want to try that again and I want to try to I want you, Kenny, to sing the lead on it because he was our lead singer. And, and so I said, I want you to sing the lead on it. And so we reached and got it and unraveled it. And uh, it was not clear, perfectly clear, but it was like the ink had cleared back up to where you could, you could literally see the words on it. And so I started singing it to him, or he started singing it, and I was feeding him those words. And... Uh, Empty building seats, probably a thousand people, but the glory of the Lord just filled it like every seat in the yes, house. Yes, sir. Right. Glory to God. And you could tell that God had orchestrated something bigger than us. No. And, and uh, so somebody told asked me not long ago said said uh, Ronnie said you must have been you must have felt like 
John in the third heavens uh -huh. when you wrote that song. I said, well, a John did have something to do with it. <laughs> so <laughs> so uh, that's the story that's of the lighthouse. And when it started, awesome. when it, um, I went, <laughs> we went on an old tour, on a tour in an old bus, uh -huh. uh, 1948 Greyhound Silverside. And um, that bus had an engine that was about to blow up, and yet we were crazy enough and <coughs> ambitious enough and felt like we were called enough that God would take care of us, and, and we took off in that old bus. And, and uh, I remember crossing the Arizona desert, and it ran out of fuel, or the fuel lines stopped up, and I was spraying ether into the intake manifolds at the back of the bus because they told us that there's a truck stop. If you reach the top of this hill, there's a truck stop just the at the, on the bottom of the hill, and, and you'll be able to fuel up. And so it was like uh, it was like uh, the world will lie to you, but Jesus won't disappoint you when you when you uh, follow His plan. He will never say "gotcha." And uh, but there was no truck stop, and I wasted six cans of ether, oh. ether and passed out at the back of the bus. God love your heart. <laughs> but we were going to a place called Prescott, Arizona. We were of the same church denomination that the Goodmans were in. And uh, so we were all booked to sing at a youth service out there, youth rally. And so we met the Goodmans. Uh, and uh, that night, um, I sung the lighthouse. And uh, so Rusty and Howard and Sam and all of them heard it. And they wanted to record it, and I said, "You can record it, but not until, not until we record it first. Uh -huh. They said, "Well, we've got a recording studio in Madisonville, Kentucky. If you'll come back there, we will, we will reproduce uh, your record." And so we went back and uh, recorded the original recording of the lighthouse. Oh, okay. And uh, then a few months later, uh, the Goodmans recorded their version. Of course, they were very popular, mm -hmm. and we were nobody knew who we were. But uh, here's what had happened: when I was a kid, I was we were rehearsing. We had just started the group, and uh, uh, maybe a couple of years we've been going, and. Uh, so we, I went to my bass player, my original bass player's house to, re to uh, rehearse, and we never. It was it was so foggy with that marine layer and what they call Thule mm -hmm. fog, that I couldn't drive home. So I just said, I'm going to pile up here on the couch and I'll go to work in the morning at my job from here. And I laid on the sofa uh, at his house in a strange environment. And it was dark, and um, some people won't understand this, but some people know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, I laid there and had a dream of wanting to sing, wanting to travel and sing. And I felt a hand reach over the back side of me and rolled me off into the floor on the old 1960s shag rug. And... Uh, Somebody had been outside and walked in with their wet feet. It may have been me, and I remember that old shag rug smelt like a wet dog. And I, I thought, here I am laying in this, on this stench, and I'm listening. The room illuminated with the presence of God, and I heard the voice of God say, Ronnie, said, I know how much you want to minister for me. And said, I will take you all the way to the top with your family if you'll take me with you. <laughs> and, and I thought even after that, I thought, how in the world could God get me out of California where singing so-so, but it's not, it's not like it would be if you were going to try to make the ministry a career out of it. How would I ever get out of California? And God's master plan started working. And it was, that was... 69 and in 1970 that night in that church i wrote that song the lighthouse moving ahead we sang it that night 
recorded it in in Madisonville, Kentucky, uh, sang it with the Goodmans. They heard it, and their version of it went to the top. And ours, unknown, I think we've got it the number four, or number seven, oh. in the top ten. And the Lighthouse became the song of the year, nineteen seventy-two. Yes. First time that a song ever won both the Dub Award and the Fan Awards, and uh, I don't think it's ever been done since. But uh, I wondered what all the, you know, I was a novice at writing songs, so I wondered what all the hoopla was about. So I got on a bicycle and rode. This was just a few weeks after I wrote the lighthouse. I started trying to find a lighthouse. And I, and I found the old Pigeon Point Lighthouse north of Santa Cruz, California. And I sat on a rock and looked at that faded ink yes. that I could barely read and looked at what I was seeing that I'd never seen anything like it. But God described to me in those words yes, on that exactly what I was seeing. And I wept and cried and knew that was bigger than any of us. And uh, so... That is, that is how the lighthouse come about, and that song. I told I told my family. I said, if we can just get to Texas, there's a big concert in Texas. We're going to go on tour. So we were on tour going through Prescott, Arizona, where we sung with the Goodmans. First tour out of California. Next stop was this big concert where I had booked. Uh, at the at the big main auditorium in Fort Worth, Texas, and I said, if we can just get there, we're booked to sing there, and that'll be the breaking point for us. And uh, so we finally arrived at that auditorium, and I said, you stay here on the bus, kids, and I'm going to go in and introduce myself to the promoter and tell him we're here and we're ready to sing. So when I got to the, to find, I found the promoter. I said, I'm Ronnie Henson with the Hensons. And he said, the who? And I said, the Hensons. And he said, I've never heard of them. I said, sir, you, you booked us to sing. And I said, uh, my family's dependent on this being their breakthrough, you know, to sing this big concert. And uh, he said, well, they don't have to be some other time, some other place, and by some other promoter, because... I don't even know you. Ain't got time. He said, "This is a stamp school graduation ceremony." So uh, I went back and told my kids. They were mad at me. They said they all sat in the back of the bus and I sat up there by myself. And so we were halfway between Fort Worth and Dallas, Texas. And they said, uh, "I said I'm going to turn this bus around, and go back, and tell them we're going to sing." <laughs> So I went and found him, and I said, uh, sir, I said, I'm going to sing on the steps of your, your auditorium if I have to sing on that day, but I'm going to sing. And he said, don't embarrass us. He said, I'll let you sing in the intermission. So I said, just one song is all I'd like to sing. Hey, Randy. And uh, so he said, nobody will be in there to listen to you. They'll all be out in the lobby. Mm -hmm. And so we said we just sang one song, sung the lighthouse, power of the Lord hit that lobby, just like a vacuum cleaner. They pull back in there, they shout and praising God. And that was so widespread how that happened during the intermission that that uh, old boy named Les Beasley with the Florida Boys who owned, who run the Gospel Singing Jubilee heard about it. And while we were on that tour going further back east, uh, he invited us to come and sing uh, a, a guest spot on the Jubilee. And so we uh, we said, that'd be great. And so we went and and uh, did that. And uh, it turned out great. And we took that old bus about to blow up out to Hornwall, where my dad was born. And he left as an orphan when he was 13. And... Uh, we it, snow was thawing, but and so the ground was soft near the house. So we parked the bus out near the fence line, and we was living on that bus with those army cots in the bus. And uh, all of a sudden, uh, there's a knock on the door, 
and this was the first night we'd slept on the bus. And this guy says, how much you want for this bus? It looked like it was parked out there for sale. I said, it's our only means of transportation and we live on this bus. He said, uh, okay, it just looked like it was for sale. So I turned him down. So next morning, knock on the door, different person. How much you want for this bus? I said, it's not for sale. Four times. Fourth time of the Lord impressed upon me, you better sell this bus. I said, so the guy opened, the, knocked on the door, and I opened the door. And none of us said anything, and finally I just said, thirty-five hundred cash. And he said, it's sold. I said, oh, but I got to tell you about this engine. I said, it's a unique engine. I said, you don't ever have to change oil on this one. I said, you just pour it through and catch it on the bottom. And he, he said, we're all. He said, we're all diesel mechanics, so we'll Mom. we'll take care of it. So we unloaded our, our army cots and tied them in the back of a pink's truck and headed for California and spent everything we had by the time we got home with 13 people in the back of a truck. Aww. And uh, That's dedication. so when we got home, I mean, everybody thinks it's easy street, no. you know, but and that you just got a glamour, you know, glamorous life. But when we got home, um, we broke. My dad had an old 1967 LeSabre Buick, and they called us from Les Bees. They called us and said, "We've never had, we've never had cards and letters like this. Want to hear uh, those kids sing like they sing on the on the Jubilee?" He said, "If you guys can get back here in three days, we're filming a whole year's worth of Jubilee filming. So if you can get back here in three days, we're going to make you a permanent member wow. of the." Of the Jubilee. Jubilee. So, so that told me that from that moment we became a household name uh, in everybody's home and uh, that was God doing what he said he would do. We'd be faithful to him. <laughs> we weren't perfect but he was perfect and we actually got our, our exposure in 1971 when we moved to Kentucky and started singing, started singing back east in the Bible Belt actually that's when we really begin our ministry so from 71 to 79 uh, we were in 79 we were voted number one group in gospel music fastest rising group I believe in, in the history oh yes gospel music. wow so I remember watching the Jubilee our piano was on the other side of the room and I was just little I had the coffee table and I'd sit there and Jubilee come on and I was Jubilee that it's in you at the beginning isn't it yeah <laughs> I, I remember quitting the Jubilee every every time we'd go there to film. We'd be out on the road singing, and we'd come in it tired and have to sit in that makeup chair. And we were holding those people, you know. We, we <laughs> I didn't believe in put, that, dude. Put that makeup on me. My, my mama quit me. Yeah. And, uh, so, so they'd put that makeup on us, and they'd get up in my nose. I'd be sneezing. And, and, uh, having to drink coffee to stay awake six o'clock in the morning and and every time we'd say we're going to quit this this will be yeah. the last time we ever do this yeah, no. and we didn't have any idea that it was what it was doing you know bringing us bringing us into all those homes and it was uh it was god orchestrated it, yes, it's um uh, you know you just um uh, you look back over it and you uh you just have to say, I know we didn't know what we were doing, mm -hmm. and uh, so to God be the glory. Yes. So, what's going on now? I am traveling today, uh, busier than I've ever been. It's been an amazing thing. Um, my wife Lisa does the booking for me, and uh, she uh, she is a slave driver. She just. Um, I was. I had two days that I was going to relax, um, and uh, before I headed to California, and um, so she just booked them up today. <laughs> and so I don't have I don't have any downtime. But uh, we're enjoying it. Yes. Got a new project. It's 50 year anniversary of the lighthouse. The lighthouse at this time, right now, this moment, it was about to change. But it had ruled the song, as song of the year, 1973, uh, until the convention had the 
award show the one night of the convention. I usually, I think back then it was on a Thursday night. And so uh, in 73, on a Thursday night, um, the Lighthouse gave it gave up its its first place status uh, to a song called He Pilots My Ship, which is another song that I wrote and it <laughs> shot myself in the foot. But, but, uh, but I also still love He Pilots My Ship. Yeah. Uh, and uh, but anyway, the lighthouse was number one at this time, uh, fifty-three years ago. How about that? Yeah, God is good. Yeah, He is. And so we're traveling, booking dates. And if anybody wants to book Ronnie Henson, it's RonnieHenson.com or RonnieHensonMinistries.com. So six one five eight five one nine five four two. Thank you. And somebody's out there. Let me have a gift hidden inside you. You have ministered to me right here. I, I say it again. I said you have ministered to me more than you ever know right here. Thank you. But there's somebody out there that has a dream. Yeah. Well, and 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 I've always said. They said, "Well, how did all of that coming about the way it was? The toilet and all." I said, "It simply says God can take." nothing yes touch it and make something i i wrote a song that the uh Kent, canton junction recorded uh john hagee's boy the pastor god has a better plan he's so much wiser than the ways of man put it all in his able hands he knows what to do he's qualified he's well rehearsed he's the creator of the universe when you've done all you can God's got a better plan. Really? And uh, it's the truth. You know? Yeah. Mama, thank you so much. Well, you're just more than welcome. And and uh, anybody can tolerate this interview. God bless you. All right. Everybody's going to love this interview. And I thank you for coming and sharing the joy of your salvation. Thank you. My guest. I've got joy like a river. That's right. And uh, I, can I just say one you more say thing? Whatever you want. What God wants to take, or what the devil wants to take from you. Yes is in the title of your program, Joy. And the Bible said the joy of the Lord is our strength. Our strength now, that's yes. not our strength to just get out of bed or go eat a bite yeah. or, or share that, wash it? your face or whatever. That is joy. In this case, means influence. The Lord gives you influence. Yes. And the devil wants to steal your influence, your joy. Nobody wants to follow a loser. Everybody wants to follow a winner. And so... You be a winner, even in the lowest times. You think about the fact that your lowest is better than the highest of that man or woman that doesn't know Jesus. Right. Has to walk through circumstances alone. The joy of the Lord is our influence. Yeah. There's a lighthouse. On a hillside And it overlooks Life's sea When I'm tossed It sends out a light A light that I might see And the light that shines In darkness night will safely lead me on But if it wasn't for that old light house My ship would sail no more Now everybody that lives around us Say, go on and tear that old lighthouse down. We all know the big ships, why they don't sail by this way anymore. And I just can't see no use in it standing round. Then my mind goes back to that stormy night when just in time. Thank God I saw the light It was the light 
from that old lighthouse And it still stands up there on a hill And I thank God for that old lighthouse I owe my life to Him Oh, that old rage and sea of life Jesus is still that old lighthouse And from the rocks of sea You know, I still remember that old stormy night in my life When I had no hope But then I saw that glorious light And now I can clearly see Watch what he can do. This week, I have but just to interview Ronnie uh, Hanson. That that was enough for me. But I interview next week. We're gonna have a lot more. I'm not gonna tell you. Just tune in to come share the joy right here at National Quartet Convention. God bless you. Good night. See you next week.